everyone welcome back to rts and welcome back to our four for four series now off for today what are we going to do we are simply going to have some fun cut our papers and then we're going to talk a little bit about kit storage because in between our videos and our working on our pages you know life will be happening the holidays will be happening and you want to be able to store these in a good manner so you don't lose any pieces so we'll talk about that because I got a couple questions on kit storage so that's what I thought I would cover this time you know do it a little bit different so what do we need to have as far as cutting our papers and this is a process I would say two things one you need to make sure you have your papers written down and I'll talk about that in just a minute and two do not rush this because you know the old saying measure twice cut once yes and so I always tell myself when I go to do this process slow it down a little bit because I, you know sometimes you only have one piece of paper so that's what we're going to do so our four pieces of paper if you choose to do so for matting and cards we're not going to do anything with them and then the four card stocks that we are going to be using on our layouts we're not doing anything with those either so you can simply put those to the side and we will play with those puppies later <laughs> Yes. Okay, so what are we going to play with today? We are absolutely going to play with papers one, two, three, and four. Okay, and then I'll talk about our buffer sheet, which is paper number five. And so I will talk about that. Uh, I guess now. Okay. <laughs> so with our papers, when I had said we when we were making the kit, and also too in the previous uh, four for four series and I will have the videos linked below for cutting papers in the first round and also too in the second round because I talked about a couple of different things in those so uh, you can watch those for a little bit of fun in the second video in the fall round I talked about branding strips so that's something to consider when you're cutting your papers and I don't have any branding strips on this one because it came from a paper pad so but if you do uh, don't always go by your branding strips they're different by each manufacturer make sure you get that full 12 inches when you're cutting that branding strip and then also also, too, uh, I said make sure you number your papers. And you can see I have my note here. And when I'm done cutting these papers, this piece of paper will go in with my kit. Okay? Because I, you know, when I get to this in a few days from now, you know, we have so much going on in this month. There's just no way you're going to remember. You think you're going to remember. I can't even remember what I had for lunch yesterday, which was probably a cookie, but I can't remember. So do yourself a favor, take a minute and write these down. And so, of course, I have my number one and number two, number three and number four and number five. And I keep them in this order until I'm done cutting. And then after that, uh, game one. Yes. So <laughs> you need to write those numbers down and what your papers are. Okay. So let's get cracking. Let's get out the cutter and get out our cutters, get out our trimmers. And let's start cutting. Now, for our papers, we have papers one, two, three, four, and our buffer. And we're not going to do anything with our buffer, okay? So, really, we only need papers one through uh, four, okay? But the papers, number one to three, and I'll have the instructions listed below, that uh, papers number one through three are cut exactly the same, okay? And so, what I would do... Uh, sorry, I just hit my camera. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Uh, what you can do is simply cut off your branding strip first and then figure out which paper, which way you want your paper. Okay. Because again, one through three will be cut exactly the same. And I'm looking at my notes here and then I'm looking at my class notes. <laughs> Yes, okay, and I will have some other videos linked below. And then the one thing I want to say, too, not only with numbering your num numbering your papers, is that also, too, if you have text, and I don't have any text in my sheets, but I clearly have a direction in that, okay? So this would be the type of, uh, type of paper. If you have a direction, if you have a direction in your paper, you need to pay attention to that when before you start cutting your papers. And we'll talk about that. But I think the only paper that I need to be concerned about, uh, not the pine cones, but the Christmas tree. They're definitely Christmas trees are in a certain direction. So we'll talk about that more in just a minute. And so let's get cracking. Let's get cutting. Let's get to having fun. And again, this really has no... Uh, order for me as far as direction but uh, for a paper number one two and three we are going to cut off a half inch and then a six foot twelve and then we're going to cut uh, two, a couple more pieces and so very very simple cuts so, so my first cut is uh, for paper number one is I'm going to do a half inch okay and I always just come over here and use my half inch and I apologize for being left-handed and things are upside down but hey at least you can see what I'm doing <laughs> But that's just what lefties do. We do things upside down. So I'm, I need a half an inch. So I can say, do I want this, you know, where it's going to cut in that plaid, or I can cut it this way, and it's probably going to be exactly the same, almost. So there's no wrong way when you first start cutting 
very first to move your paper this way or to this way to see how you want it because everybody's going to be using different papers. So there's no right way or wrong way. It's just whatever way you want. So I'm definitely going to be cutting at a half inch and I'm using the half inch mark here, which I absolutely could use the half inch mark here. I'm just so used to doing it this way. And so there is my half inch cut. Okay. And then I'm going to need a six by 12. So I can come over here, just slide this over here, and there and my paper here is at 6, and there is my 6 by 12, okay? I'm already loving that already. <laughs> All we did was two cuts, okay? Now you see how I have my piece of paper here, okay? I have 12 inches, and then this is 5 and a half because I cut a half inch off, okay? So I'm going to rotate this, okay? Because now we're going to make a cut at 6. Let me slide this up just a tad. And I'm going to cut at 6. Okay, and I'm just looking at my notes. And then I'm going to cut at four. Okay, because again, you can see this is five and a half. And then I'm going to be left with a two inch piece. And so that is how <laughs> that piece of paper went. Right there's my cuts. Okay, and then we're going to distribute those for our layouts. Okay, so now let's go to paper two because this, this process here it takes a minimal amount of effort. <laughs> It is just so quick. Okay, so again, which way do I want this? It really doesn't make any difference, but I know that I'm going to use a 6 by 12. So do I want my 6 by 12 this way, or do I want my 6 by 12 this way? Okay, and again, everybody's using something different, so there's nothing wrong. And I think I want my 6 by 12 this way. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with rotating your paper to get the cut that you want initially. Okay, so there is my half inch. And then I'm going to slide this over and I'm going to get my six inch. There's my six by 12. And that is my six by 12 right there. Love it. Love it. Okay. So again, if it's a directional piece of paper or text, you have to pay attention to that. And don't be afraid to switch and say, oh, is my text going to go this way? Or is my text going to go this way? Okay. You have to pay attention to that. Again, and then I'm going to just rotate this one turn. And then now this is going to, because this is five and a half, I'm going to do a cut at six and then I cut it four and then I'm left with a two okay now if any point in time while I'm doing this if it seems a little too fast for you uh, definitely go to make uh, cutting papers uh, on round one and I do it more than once I even break out some extra paper just so you can simply see that okay so now I'm on paper three and guess what this is my directional piece of paper I have Christmas trees and so I don't want my Christmas trees going upside down on my page so I don't I do not want to cut my paper this way, okay, because if I did, my Christmas trees would be going in the opposite direction, okay, and so I want to make sure that I'm going to rotate it, okay, so here's my half inch, okay, and then I'm going to slide it over, and there's my six inches, and I will show you what I mean in just a minute. See my Christmas trees? They're going in the right direction. Okay, so I'm left with this piece here. It's five and a half by 12. I'm going to rotate this once, and then I'm cutting at six, and then we're gonna cut at four, and then we're left with our lovely little two. And there you go, my friends. That is papers one through three, all cut for our four pages. I mean, is that just not wonderful or what? Yes. Love it. And it doesn't matter if these get mixed up. Don't worry about that because we'll talk about that in just a minute. Okay. And now I'm looking at my notes and we're going to go to uh, paper number four. Okay. And you know which number your uh, number four paper is because you wrote it down. <laughs> yes, you did. I know you did. Yes. Okay. It does make a difference. It clearly does. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to be cutting a four by 12 twice, a two by 12 and a one by 12. And I wanted to make sure I look at my notes because, you know, sometimes I, you know, I don't want to cut into this and make a mistake. So it really doesn't matter to me how this is going to go because the sprays are in different direction. So it's really not going to matter to me. So I'm going to do, what did I just say? Yes, I was getting ready to cut off a half inch. See what I'm saying? Yes, no. We're going to cut a four by 12. A four by 12, okay? And then we're going to cut another four by 12. And then we're going to cut a two by 12. And with this piece that's left over, we're simply going to cut that in half, and that would be a 1 by 12, okay? And that is our paper cutting. Boy, those are pretty, aren't they? Yes. I'm so excited to see what you gals have picked for a kit, 
whether you're doing Christmas or not. And the links, um, the hashtags below, if you want to share on Instagram, will be listed below. You're more than welcome to do that. Okay, so then what are we left with? Well, there's our one, two, three, and four papers. I mean, honestly, I love that. We're left with our paper number five. And what do you do with this? Nothing. You leave it exactly as this 12 by 12 piece or eight and a half by 11, how, whatever size you're using, because you can absolutely use this as a whole, use it for a mat, use a background, however you want to do it. Or you can use it as uh, you, for punches and uh, or border strips and things like that. So right now you're just simply going to love it as it is. We're not doing anything with this. So it will go with our background papers. Okay, and so this is honestly, well, you know, your page number five, your bonus sheet there, you just leave it as it is, and that is, my friends, we are done with the cutting. I mean, how quick is that? Now, uh, some people had asked me that when I'm doing this for before, how do I keep my papers? Do I keep it by size or do I keep it by my pattern paper? And I simply keep it by my pattern paper, okay? I just keep it like this because I don't... I. It, I don't need to know the size. I want to make sure I keep my, my papers together just like that, okay? And then we'll be talking about that in, uh, when we start our layout one, okay? Because I'm going to say on layout one, we're going to use this and we're going to use that. And that's why this piece of paper, and I might as well just rip it out right now because that's going to go in with my kit, okay? So uh, just hang on for a minute and I will come back. And I'm going to show you how I stored my kit for this 4 for 4 series because, again, there'll be a few days in between. We're going to have a mega holiday in between, and so we want to keep things protected and organized so that we can go to it quickly. Okay, so hang on, and we will talk about kit storage for our 4 for 4 kit. Okay, so hang on. Okay, so now let's start playing with our kit before we start playing with our kit. And what does that mean? That means we get to absolutely go through, spend a little time just loving over these supplies before we start playing with them. And that means storing them and storing them in a way that's easy to get to. Now, when I am working with our Record December series, and I will have that playlist link below, how I stored that kit, because there's a week in between each one of those, uh, you know, when I get that kit out to work on, is that I absolutely, I just stored everything in one of my Dollar Tree bags and my smaller items and sandwich bags quick and then here's also my layouts okay so everything is just in this bag I can't recommend these Dollar Tree bags enough so I simply have it in a bag okay now because I may be doing a little scrapping uh, because my girl's coming home but I may be doing a little scrapping maybe not at my desk you know playing around with a little bit and so I thought this time I would put it in an iris uh, little bin okay one of these you know you just get from Michaels or whatever uh, or Hobby Lobby whatever it doesn't have to be iris brand and uh, and I will say something that I honestly this is my personal opinion I think this iris brand I think the quality has went downhill from when they first started making this type of product that's just my opinion and so it doesn't have to be iris brand to be good so just keep that in the back of your mind so i thought i would play with um you know my kit supplies and storm in that way and then i also have one of these iris uh, divider trays okay and i have um one of these okay now these are not my favorite thing <laughs> No, they're not. Okay, but I know I will not be using these because to me they get in my way. I think these right here, I think they're very limiting right off the bat. It's like, oh, you know, I just don't like that, so I'm just going to leave this open. And you also could use a lid of a photo box, you know, if you wanted to, if you didn't have one of these. So, uh, I will have a link below if you are interested in finding these you can still get them on Amazon okay and uh, what I did was uh, a couple years ago when I heard that Michaels wasn't going to carry them I just went on Amazon I think I bought eight or ten something like that and I will have to tell you it's one of those purchases I almost wish I wouldn't have bought because I don't really care for them but it is what it is I wish this whole thing was just an empty you know like a smaller like a chobe chobe I just wish it was open I think you can play with things more but I digress going down a rabbit hole we're going to play with these lovelies and we're going to put them in this and I'm going to show you exactly how I do it because I got to ask some questions so the first thing I do is when I'm working on a kit like this is I put my papers away first because that is um you know you don't want to get them dinged up so for our our kid here okay now I'll be honest with you I normally don't have it looking like this I just did it because I wanted to just because it's pretty <laughs> because I want to show some different options because I've gotten asked how I do things so uh, what I'm going to do is right here's my notes and uh, for my cutting my papers and my papers here 
that we cut earlier is that all of these are going in a uh, an, a page protector. It doesn't matter what size it is. It's just a leftover. It doesn't have to be nothing new. Just whatever you have. And I'm simply going to make sure I grab every one of these because uh, last uh, in the fall round I lost a piece of paper. So every one of those is in a page protector with my notes. So uh, a few days from now when I get this out, I don't have to worry about remembering what was what and everything is included. Okay, I have nothing laying around. Okay, so what am I going to do? is that now I'm going to grab my four card stocks, okay, and then my buffer sheet, my eight and a half by 11, and I'm gonna put my, uh, you know, the papers that we cut, and I'm simply going to put that in that iris box. And I will already tell you, I had this on the floor and I tripped over it already. I mean, I think I have a bullseye on my forehead when there's something on the floor. It's like an inner radar, something on the floor trip, something's on the floor trip. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what that is. So this is simply just going in my uh, in my iris uh, bin there. Okay, so my papers are protected. Okay, now what I will do next is that I will simply put these in a pile by type of product. So my washi, my trimmings, and I'm going to talk about how we're going to handle this type of supply right here. As far as a the liquid, there's a punch, punch, punch. We're going to talk about that. And then I have these little bits and bobs. Okay, because we're going to do something with them. I'll show you what I do with them. Because if you just simply put all of this stuff, just like this, in a pile on top of that paper, you will not have an interest to do, <laughs> to play with it. No, I think the more you make things look attractive, you know, the more you want to play with it. Okay, of course, that didn't sound too good. Moving on, moving on. <laughs> My mind went to the gutter. Okay, so I have uh, some embellishments. I'm just going to put them in a pack. Again, my washing, my trimmings, and then, of course, then we have our thicker. So let's put all of those, whatever you're doing for your alphas, put them in a pile. And then if you have border strips like I do, we're going to put them in a pile. And I have some loose uh, snowflakes here because I was, you know, actually snapping a photo of the kit. And we're going to put these in a little bit of a better arrangement, okay? And whenever I do border circles, I always put the biggest one in the back. It just helps you keep them in order. Okay, and I'm going to take a ponytail holder, okay, and I am going to organize them this way, and I just keep my ponytail holders just in a sandwich bag, and there's that iris, boy, that's going to go sliding. See, oh, moving on, I was just going to say, this is why I don't care for them, because of that plastic, they slide, but then so does a plastic bag, so it all moves, it all moves and all shifts, okay, but it's all good, because you want to house our supplies, because if you just let this on a pile... Do you know what's going to happen? We're going to be wrapping Christmas gifts. We're going to lose something. Then we're going to have to get some Christmas cards ready. We're going to lose something. So we might as well put, spend a little time and have fun just looking at the choices that we have picked. Yes. Okay. So, of course, here are some more. I'm going to put these with my alphas. And I know I had another set somewhere. So when I find it, and here are my cards. I don't want to mess, mess those up. And more embellishments, embellishments, and a little bling and zing. And I'm going to show you uh, how I keep those a little bit more contained. So if this is not something you're interested in, uh, by all means, just come back in a few days and we'll start working on our 4 for 4 series. But I got asked to show how I would do this, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, now of course these are basically thickers uh, as far as in the alphas. And so I will bag these up and I will get those ready. And I just uh, use 6 by 12 bags. I'll have the link below if you're interested in them. I just get them from Amazon. And they're good for a lot of things, not just thickers. They're good for a lot of things. Okay. I use these a lot when I travel, when I'm um, when I'm traveling and I'm taking scrapbook supplies because it just really has things, especially this type of thing right here, washi and trimmings. I like to put those in a 6 by 12 bag. They seem to uh, travel well for me that way. Okay, so that's going in that pile. Probably got some glare there. And, again, what do we have? Just more embellishments. I'm putting all my treatments here in one pile. And there's some stickers and there's that other pack. Okay, so I'm basically just have everything in a category. And then what I will do is now I am going to go from big to small. And so these uh, thickers are going to go right on top of my paper in uh, my tote. And I'll show that here at the end. Okay. And then... What do we have next? I'm gonna go ahead and put these cards. I'll show you where I'm gonna put those. 
I'm going to put these cards, cards, I'm sorry, these envelopes for our cards, I'm going to put them in the back of where I cut my papers just so I know that they're housed and protect, they won't get lost, okay? That's what I'm doing. Okay, and so we have, let's get some stickers here. And I just go from big to small, okay? Because I'm going to show you how I'm going to handle all these loose, because this right here, that's, that's too much for my brain. I don't feel like dealing with all of this when I'm, when I'm pulling out a kit. If I have to deal with a pile right off the bat, yeah, that doesn't make mama happy. No, okay. So let's get all of these stickers, and I'm simply going to put them in a pile by size if they just go better for storage, and that's basically how that's going to go. So there are the, and this will just go in that top of the pile that I'm working on right there. Yeah, that went right on top of my, I'll be right back. Hold on a minute. I had to put it on the floor to get to it. So in this iris tote, what do I have? I have my cardstock, my papers, and then my alphas, okay? And then my stickers are down there. So that's just all I'm doing. I'm just distri distributing, <laughs> distributing <laughs> the thickness so they store better in this kit. So I just have papers, and then there's my stickers, and I'm just going to keep adding things on top of that. And anything that I'm putting in that would be anything that doesn't fit and this divider tray. And this is why I'm saying if they would come out with divider trays that did not have these divided pieces, because I don't work well with those. Um, where are they? Where did I put them? I think I had them here. Those little slots. Yeah. I think these are very, uh, they're not very made very well. Yeah, I, I don't care for those. And uh, so I just wish this was an open tray. I, that's what I wish. But yeah. Okay, moving on. So I uh, just work for, I'm going to put anything in my actual bin that's not going to fit in that divider tray. That's all I'm simply doing, okay? And so that's not going to fit. Now, something like this you could cut up, but uh, yeah, I think I'm going to keep that in the packaging. Okay, and what else? I'm just pulling everything else here. Okay, and again, these foil stickers, yes. I don't want to show them. That'll give a glare. So please list below how you are going to actually store your kit. Okay, so now we got with the bigger things. Okay, we got everything basically bigger addressed. Now let's deal with all this stuff here. What am I going to do with this? Because this pile is just too much to deal with when you want to get ready to play. Okay, and plus we have some trimmings and so we have some tools. What are we going to do with our tools? Okay, so let's talk about tools and our uh, technique products. Okay, so with this, I do not suggest putting anything that's in a liquid form in a kit because if the lid pops off, your whole kit could be ruined. So what I do in this case, and then also to, excuse me, I think I had to get a drink. Oh. Wow, I think I'm talking too fast. Uh, these are too heavy to put in a kit. I mean, if they fit in your iris tote and you're keeping it in a horizontal position, that's good. But what I simply do is when I'm working on a kit, and it's going to be a kit for just a bit, is that I will just put these tools in a little a little um, bowl or a basket or something like that. And then the same with these, okay? These are all going in here. And you'll notice that there was a couple other things in here. Why? Because this is my recording December tools. So I'm just going to keep these all together. And then this is not very far from my desk because I don't want anything, you know, I don't want anything to pop off and then my whole kit would be ruined. So I do not suggest anything that's liquid and anything that can seep out. Uh, that's why when companies will send them to you, you're, they're in a sealed bag because can you imagine if that would open up? That could ruin your whole order. So yeah, do it the same way the companies do it when they send it to you. Don't package those things together. Okay, so I just, I'm going to keep them away from my kit. Okay, so now... Let's talk about, oh, okay, let's talk about trimmings. Okay, so what you can simply do is put these in a sandwich bag, okay, and that houses those very well. And then what you also could do, I thought I had some here, yes. I have other size bags, but a sandwich bag works fine. I'm just using what I have and what I can pull out. <laughs> yes. Lord, I don't even know what I'm pulling out here, ladies. Yeah, there was some electrical ties. <laughs> you know, those zip ties? Yeah, I don't even want to know what those are for. 
Yeah. Oh Lord. But honestly, that's what we, that is what I pulled out of my drawer. And you know what I have these for? Is I learned how a couple years ago to make bows, and so I was making some bows. And instead of using wire, I used these zip ties. And boy, you talk about a difference when making homemade bows. You know, for outdoor decor and things, huge difference. Okay. So for my trimmings, what I simply can do is put them in a bag, and you could absolutely put in a six or twelve bag, a sandwich bag. These are just five or seven bags. And so I'm simply going to put my trimmings in this bag because that is, I just want them together by category. And again, that's just going to be put together uh, in either the top of that tray or in the actual tote itself. Because you know, we have those dividers that you can't, you know, you have to have just certain embellishments that fit, which makes no sense to me. But I digress. Moving on. So I'm going to keep all my washi and my bling and zing, anything I was using for that. And I'm just putting them in bags because these will store better. Okay. But maybe it depends on, okay, I'm just going to show this option, but then I'll show you the option if this, if I put them in a divider tray. I just wanted to show options, options. I get questions. Again, these little things here, uh, sequin stars, and uh, peppermint candies, things like that, enamel dots, okay? We're gonna put them in that divider tray, okay? Now, if you have buttons or anything loose like this, sequins, and these little brad stars, I do recommend that you put them in a little sandwich bag. These are just little jewelry bags. And you know, honestly, the best place to find these type of little bags is not at a scrapbook store, it's not a craft store, it's at a tool store, yes. So definitely, when you go into a tool store like Harbor Freight, these are the best place, that's the best place to find these little type of baggies. So Okay, my husband found those for me. And okay, that could go in that trimmings there too. Okay. And then I have some of these small snowflakes. So again, I'm just going to put them in those little bags that uh, my husband found. I think there was uh, like a hundred or I don't know, 150 of them. <laughs> it was so cheap. So like, can you use some of these little bags? I'm like, yes. And so I'm going to just put them in a bag because I don't like things loose like that. And then I am absolutely, here's a little gem. Well, I just lost it. Where did that little gem go? I saw a little gem floating around. Okay, I'm absolutely gonna open up this package because if I wanna use it, it needs to be out of here. So, file 13, and then I absolutely could put that in a little bag or keep it like that. Now let's come to something like this. Now I have my wood veneer stored in these little bins, and I don't wanna put this whole bin in my, uh, iris tote you know for kit storage because i may want to use these on a, a gift or or another page so what i will do is i will take a couple out of here and i'm just going to take a representation of a few of these and then maybe like two of each and then i'm just going to stick them in a little bag and then again i will put this away so i don't lose them and i don't need all of it but again that gives me the representation that i need that this is what I have to play with, okay? So now let's just move this to the side and let's get out this divider tray. And I have it, I might as well use it. They're not my favorite, folks, I'll just be honest. <laughs> They're not my favorite, okay? So you can absolutely put things by category in bags and put them in your kit that way because not everybody has a divider tray. So I would say whatever you can sandwich up, uh, put them in a sandwich bag and keep them together, it keeps things more contained, okay? Or you can simply take them out and if you have a divider tray, I suggest taking away those dividers and then just putting your things like this, okay? So there, there was a couple of different options. Okay, and now this washi. Okay, see what I'm saying? It already doesn't fit. These fit, but that doesn't fit. And I don't know, my brain has to have things all together. <laughs> yes. Now, I think they can store like that too, depending on how much paper you have. Uh, in your kit, okay? But I have had some kits where the, the washi will stand like that and some kits they won't. But we're gonna give it a go, why not? Now I know that won't, okay? But we'll, we'll do it, we'll just make it pretty, how's that? And then we'll play with that, okay? Now again, I'm gonna put these type of things, they're in bags, and if this was just loose, you, you would have, well that would just be too much work, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yes, okay. We're just gonna put these things here. They're in bags, there's more trimmings. And then we have such things as tags. I could put that in with the trimmings. And we're just gonna play, 
Okay, so we have tags. Now these doilies, see them already, where are they going to go? Yeah, they're not going to fit. They're not going to fit it. Well, they would fit in there. Okay, so I could separate them. And why would I separate them? Because then if I don't see these, I'll see these and then I'll know I have them. So we've got to do something with those. Oh, it's such decisions. But this will be fun to play with if I go, you know, decide to play in, uh, you know, when my little one comes home. And... <clears throat> And I want to, you know, maybe do some crafting in another room. That would be fun. Yes, okay. Now that's a bigger piece. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just seeing what will fit. Won't fit. Now, something like this, I could absolutely cut down. And I will. I'm going to cut these down to make them fit. Because I have more than one of these, I don't need to keep them in the bag. So that's what I'm going to do. And if you want to hang on, I'll just keep on working on kit storage. <laughs> yes. This is what I do. Yeah. And so I will cut these down. And and I'll just move a couple so I can just take a pair of scissors and I will cut those down. And I have no problem cutting embellishments to fit where I need them to be. Because it's about using our supplies, not keeping them in perfect shape, right? Absolutely. Okay. And I'm just going to cut these. And if you have to move a couple of your embellishments around... And cut some of your packaging. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Now these are just the cutest little things. I'm going to trim off some of this. And so now those uh, embellishments that didn't fit now do fit. Okay. I don't do that with everything. Just with things that I want to be able. I really could put those in with this. Boy, this is starting to look pretty and I haven't even started using it yet. Okay. So how are you storing your kit? Are you going to be trying a different way in uh, 2019 as far as storing kits? And I say there's nothing wrong with trying a little bit of anything. No. Now this is getting a little bling and zing, but that's okay. I think that'll work. Okay. And then we have some more snowflakes. And you see how it's easier to see these. I hope I'm in frame. It's easier to see these and get to these all these little mini things when they're in these little bags, you know, micromanaging everything. Okay, now this won't fit, but this may. Yes, and if it doesn't, <laughs> cut it up, baby. <laughs> yes, that's how I do it. Okay, now that could go into trimmings, and I have no problem cutting up embellishments. I have no problem cutting them, getting them out of the packaging and throwing the packaging away. Now those will fit perfectly in there. I'll put the tags over there. That adorable will fit. Those cards will fit. I may put them over here, wherever they may go. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You're just playing. You're playing musical chairs with your embellishments, is what you're doing. That's all you're simply doing. Let me put these tags on top of these. Okay, and I had these numbers, so now I got to find a place for these. So what are we doing with the numbers? How about back there? Will they fit? There we go. Solution. Love that. Okay. And then I have my photo corners. And we're going to now see where they go here in just a minute. Okay. Here are some of these uh, more labels, stickers. Yes. And don't worry about things getting too buried because, you know, it's pretty simple just to pick them up. And this is what I have going on over here. Okay, photo corners. I really don't want to cut those up. I keep those packaged in a certain way. And there's some note tags. And so this is what I'm doing. I am just simply going to put all of these pocket cards together along with my tags. Putting them in there. Loving having, having fun with all this. Yes. I'm just keeping that all together. Probably getting a little bit of a glare there. Okay, and then of course here to the left, I have my border stickers. Now where am I putting those? Okay, so they would absolutely not fit. Okay, so that has to go in my tote. Okay, and then there's that little gem. Remember I told you there was a little red gem? There it was. Okay, I don't think it's going to go in there. It's not going to stay, but it's there. And then I have these snowflakes. So I go put these snowflakes here. And that'll just remind me to play with all that stuff. Okay, but sometimes with these snowflakes, they get very delicate and they break very easily. Okay, I maybe could put, let's see, move a, a couple more things. Not going to fit. 
they'll fit. Okay. So I will put the things in there that will fit and I definitely could cut those down. Why not? To get them to fit. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you make it fit. Okay. And then those are not going to fit. And these bows, let's just cut them down some more. And that's just what you do to get things to fit in a kit. And like I said, this is the downfall of having these divider trays with dividers. Okay. Now I wouldn't even been able to do any of this if I had those little, if I had these things, I think these are very lim limiting. And so I just scrap them. Don't need them. Don't need them at all. Okay. And so what do I have left? I have this. I will keep that in that packaging. And there you go. I'm looking around all of my liquid things on my tools are housed in there. This is my divider tray. Looks pretty good. Yes. And there we go. That is my kit. Now this is not going to fit. But see what I'm saying? If this would not have even had these dividers, I could have got those in there. I could have got those other uh, glitter papers. I could have got those six by six papers. I could have got those border stickers in there. But again, beggars can't be choosers. But if I was designing one of these, you know, hey, maybe that's what we should do. We should contact We Are Memory Keepers and say, we want a kit storage and this is what we want. Uh, yeah, now there we go. That's an idea. Maybe we'll do that <laughs> because companies do like that. A good company wants to hear from their consumers. Okay, so now hold on a minute and I will pull up my, uh, I will pick this up. Okay, so I will pick this up and I will put my doilies here and I'm going to put my doilies underneath my bigger items. Okay, so I have everything in there that did not fit in that tray and we're going to put this divider tray. And someone asked me recently, why did, uh, why did Michael start, stop carrying them? I have no idea why, because they were a good selling product. Makes no sense. I don't know. Maybe they were having trouble getting them. But then uh, this tray just goes simply right on top of all that. And that's why, and I'm going to put this against my filming equipment here in a minute. This is why when you're putting items here, if you can distribute them as much as you can, that helps with your divider tray not be so lumpy it'll stay more st stable if the if these bottom items are stacked uh side by side if that makes sense okay so there let me see okay there we go i'm maneuvering between lamps okay so there is my kit all ready to go for our four for four i'll just move it this way might be upside down there's everything for four for four and so when i get everything out i right now my papers are there i can start and my papers <laughs> You can see they're underneath my alphas, but I will be pulling all of this out and then have this to play with. Okay. Now I'm not a big fan of these, but you know, it's always good to switch things up. Is it not? Okay. So there we go. There is how we cut our papers. And again, I have some videos linked below. That is how I'm storing this kit this time, but there's nothing wrong with absolutely, uh, you know, how I have my recording December kit. I have it in the bag option okay so it doesn't matter and i absolutely like those uh 12 by 12 photo boxes too to house kits so that's another option okay so if you have a certain way you're storing your kit and you like it share below and if you need any help cutting your papers just ask below okay so that's all i have for today come back to rts because you never know what we're gonna learn bye